Hello, my fellow El Monteans, and welcome to another broadcast from the bunker on this stormy, stormy uh, Monday. All right, just wanted to go through the lab. Uh, I had a lot of questions, uh, a lot of confused students out there on how to work through some of the parts of this lab. So uh, follow along, and hopefully I can clear up uh, some of the issues for you. Okay? All right. First off, uh, deposition, remember, uh, there are three major variables. Uh, the shape of the particle, the density of the particle, and of course the size of the particle. Um, as far as shape goes, right, the rounder is going to settle faster, least amount of surface area. Uh, the denser object will settle uh, faster. And of course, uh, the bigger ones tend to settle faster because they have more mass. Um, other things uh, you got to realize as you were doing this, uh, time and rate are kind of opposites, right? Uh, they'll have opposite relationships as you're graphing them. Uh, and there were some other graphing questions you guys had. I'll try to address those as we go. All right. So hopefully you read your introductions. You do all your vocabulary. Uh, now let's roll down into the uh, meat and potatoes here. All right. This would have been the setup in class. Uh, we would have dropped all sorts of different particles down the two. We would have had a timer. Uh, data keeper, all that stuff, uh, and that's where you would have gotten your data from. So the abbreviated data that I put down here was rough uh, data that we've had over the years, uh, you know, collected from different classes. But again, this all would have been data that uh, we collected in class in the front of the room. Uh, would have been a lot of fun, but, you know, we'll be back there soon enough. All right, so for the first part, uh, it's talking about, um, in this case, size, and you'll see there's 4, 8, and 12. That's talking about uh, size of the particle dropped, 4, 8, and 12 millimeters. The distance traveled is always the same, 100 centimeters, because the tube that we're dropping it in was always the same, and the one in class is about 100 centimeters, so that distance will remain constant, okay? Uh, the size is 4, 8, and 12. They would have gotten plotted on the x-axis down here. So if you look at your total range of data, right, from 4 to 12, uh, well, you got to make that fit on the x-axis. So if you did, you should have gotten something like this. All right, so hopefully your x-axis looks something like that. Uh, obviously, we're only going to be using the 4, 8, and 12, but you have to space it at a consistent interval. All right. The data, now this is the time. If you'll notice, that's on the Y1 axis. Uh, we can label that right now, All right? So that's your Y1. Uh, and the time range, well, at uh, 4 to 10. So we'd say, oh, about 0 to 10. Uh, what would I skip by? Uh, and hopefully you skipped by, in this case... You could have done ones. Right? And that would have fit perfectly, 1 to 10. And now you're simply going to plot that uh, in a certain color, or you could have used a, a certain symbol. So for 4, uh, you had a 10. So you'd go 4 up to 10. That was your first plot up here. Then you would go uh, 8, uh, got a 6, 8 up to a 6. And then you would have said, all right, well, 12 took 4 seconds. Right about there. Connect it. And you got a line going down, an inverse relationship there. So the bigger the particle gets, the less time they took to settle. And that makes sense, right? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Uh, and then you had to calculate the rates. Well, if you remember your rate formula from your reference tables, uh, that would be at the front page of your tables, right? The first page, here's your formula box. And the rate, of course, is right here, change in value over time. Well, in this lab, the value uh, is going to be the distance. 
or excuse me, in this case, uh, let me get back to the lib here. Um, yeah, excuse, it's, so it's going to be distance divided by time for your rate. So uh, the distance was 100. We had a settling time of 10. You could probably do that in your head. If not, your calculator, of course, is up on the screen. So 100 divided by 10, of course, and that gives you 10. Uh, so your rate here would be a 10. And in class, we would have done a couple of trials. You would have gotten an average, but we'll use 10 for now. And then you kept going. So now 100 divided by 6. Okay, and that's about, we'll round that to a 17. And then, of course, 100 divided by 4. gives you 25. And you put that data, again, we would, have, we would have had multiple trials in class, but you'll notice that as the time decreases, the rate number increases. And there's that opposite relationship I was talking about. So you're not going to plot that on the Y1 axis, you're going to plot that on the Y2. So we'll label that one over here. And then you got to ask yourself, well, what number will I skip by there to, you know, complete uh, 10 to 24? or you could say 0 to 25, whatever is easier for you. Um, you could divide by the number of boxes. You could do a quick uh, count by 2s or 3s, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Not quite enough. Uh, so maybe we'll skip by 3s, right? 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, 15, 18, etc. Looks like it's the better way to go. Right, and 24 is as high as I need to go. And then you would just simply do the same thing. So a grain size of 4 had a rate of 10. So I would go 4, and now up to the right side, 10. Uh, maybe you want to change colors. Maybe you want to use a different symbol. Um, Whatever is easier for you. I'll use green. So... 4 is 10, and you know, I'll use symbols, I'll use circles for the first one, and then I'll use triangles for the second one. Here's my first point, second point is 817. And that's about in the same spot there. So I'm going to have two in the same spot. And then 12, 24, all the way toward the top here. And now when I connect those, it looks like it crosses right through it. But they're really two different graphs on the same uh, graph itself. Okay? So if you end up getting something like that, and you said, well, what's going on? It seems kind of weird. No, that was okay. All right? Uh... As far as on the bottom here, uh, relationship, well, uh, what's happening to time, what's happening to rate? Well, time looks like it's decreasing, rate looks like it's increasing, so you do an as statement. As time decreases, rate would increase, okay? So as the time decreased, the rate seems to increase, and you give your as statement, all right? Uh, and that's what was going on for graph A. Make sure you complete your statements both here and there. Moving on down to the second part. Okay. Well, you'll notice uh, now the density is changing, right? 2, 4, 6 getting denser as we go down. Of course, the time decrease. The denser it gets, the less time it takes to get to the bottom. And then you're going to calculate rate and graph it just like we did before. All right. Uh, so let's see here, uh, well, we're going to plot out our numbers on the x-axis, we got 2, 4, 6, so spread it out, all 
All right, maybe you want to spread it even more than that, uh, but that's okay for now. And then for the times, you have to go to 10 again, so by ones would be fine. And then simply plot in your numbers. 2 was 10, uh, 4 was 5, 6 was 2. Draw your line. I'm going to use circles again for, oh, missed that one, for my first point. All right. And that's my first graph. So the denser it gets, the less time it took. Now I got to calculate my rates using that same rate formula again. Uh, and now, of course, 100 divided by 10, 100 divided by 5, etc., and you're going to fill in your column. All right, so if you want to follow me on the calculator, in case I lost you the first time, 100 divided by 10 obviously gives me a 10. Clear it out, 100 divided by 5. And that's where I'm getting my numbers from over here. That's a 10, by the way. Uh, 20 over here, and now of course 100 divided by 2, right, and there's your 50, and that's where your rate numbers are coming from, okay, uh, so now I'm going to, this is going to be plotted on the Y2 axis, right, it says rate over there, well, I got to go 0 to 50, so maybe this time I want to skip by 5s, right, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 40, 40, 40, and that'll fit nicely, okay, so I'll put my numbers in there, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, and of course 50 at the top, uh, and then I'm simply going to plot it in. So again, I have a 2 gives me a 10, 2 gives me a 10, 4 gives me a 20, and 6 gave me a 50. I switched colors this time, so I don't need to change my symbol. Uh, but that's what your graph looks like. Once again, they are opposite relationships. Uh, fill in what's going on with time and rate. And, of course, give me your as statements. Okay? All right. Uh, for the last one, Uh, it, this time it wasn't numeric so much as it was uh, shape changing, but remember, as you go from spherical to flat, the amount of surface area would increase. So technically, uh, you know, it is still numeric, we're just using the uh, vocabulary. Alright, so flat took the longest, sphere took the shortest. Again, put your numbers on the uh, Y1 axis. So we got to go 0 to 10, right? So 1 will be fine. And now, in this time, you could either use a bar or a line graph. Uh, I'll stick with the line graph. So the flat was about a 10. So that's over here. The rod uh, would be in the middle because that's kind of the middle shape there. The rod was about a 5. And the sphere is about a 2. And my graph so far looks like that. Circle my points. Okay, and once again, you're going to calculate rates. That distance is still 100, right? That column didn't change. Uh, and now for settling rate, you're going to plug them in again. So once again, you have 100 divided by your 10. And of course, that's 10 here. 100 divided by 5. Right, and of course that's 20 here, and 100 divided by 2 gives you the 50 there. All right. All right, so now we're just going to put our Y2 data in there. And uh, same thing, i got to go to 50, so maybe you want to skip by 5s once again. You know, all the way up to 50. Uh, and it's going to be that opposite relationship. So the flat, um, the flat is a 10. That's over here. 
the rod is a 20, so somewhere here, and the sphere was a 50, that's up here, and your third graph, you know, I'll use triangles again, looks something like that. All right, so if the graph looks wacky because they cross, well, it makes sense because time and rate are opposite of each other. All right, again, tell me about your time and rates. Give me your as statement. Always start with the x-axis, right? As, in this case, as the shape gets flatter, uh, what happens to time and rate? And then, of course, answer your questions there. Uh, scrolling down uh, for the first set of questions there, how do the following variables affect the rate? Well, the bigger it is, the quicker the rate, right? The denser it is, the quicker the rate. And the rounder it is, the quicker the rate. That's how you have to word that, okay? For the second one there, what size particles seem to say suspended? This term here, suspended, uh, means they're temporarily held up. Not in solution, it's a mixture, so temporarily held up. Uh, what size particle seems to say suspended indefinitely, meaning a very long time? Well, that's going to be your small, flat, low-density things, such as clay uh, and silt. Okay. Uh, the third one, if you mix all the samples together, drop them at the same time, who's going to get out of suspension the first? In other words, who's going to get to the bottom the fastest? And who's getting down the fastest? Your roundest, heaviest, densest. Um, okay. Biggest. Number four is asking, why does the Mississippi River look so dirty? Well, if you look at the Mississippi, it looks like brown. It's got a lot of particles held in suspension, right? The clay and the silt. Uh, so you could filter that out and get uh, pretty clear water, but because it is moving, it's moving slowly, but it's fast enough to pick up all the silt and the sand that runs off from the farms and every place that it cuts through in the United States. And the last one there, how might the vertical sorting of sediments aid in the process of making sedimentary rocks? Well, if you sort things out, either vertically or horizontally, right, you have now different particle sizes in different places, which means you're going to make different rocks, right? All sand in one place, you make sandstone. Uh, all silt size in another place, you make siltstone. So this sorting business that Mother Nature does for us uh, helps make different types of sedimentary rocks as well. All right. So hopefully that helped you out. If you got to polish up uh, some questions at this point to submit it late, right? It was supposed to be submitted the other day. Uh, get it to me, right? You'll lose a little credit, but I won't uh, totally kill you on that. All right, I hope this cleared things up, folks. Enjoy the rest of this rainy day. Take care.